best known for his laugh-inducing performances in classic British TV shows like All Gas and Gators and Oh Brother, Derek Nimmo was a comedic powerhouse who captured the essence of British humor like few others could. In today's video, we'll start by exploring his early life and the path that led him to the comedic hall of fame. Then we'll venture beyond the bright lights and applause to reveal the nuances of his personal life, his marriages, affairs, and complex relationships he had with his children. Facts First UK presents The Secret Life and Tragic Death of Derek Nimmo. The Making of a Comedy Icon Born September 19, 1930 in Liverpool, Derek Nimmo grew up in Mossley Hill, a locale he fondly described as a comfy English suburbia. The son of an insurance salesman, Nimmo was immersed in a relatively conventional upbringing. He attended Booker Avenue Infants and Junior School, followed by Quarry Bank High School for Boys. It was here, under headmaster R.F. Bailey, that Nimmo was exposed to the high standards of public school education. Instead of diving straight into showbiz, he initially followed his father's footsteps into insurance. From Salesman to Stage After serving in Cyprus during his national service, Nimmo took a job as a paint company salesman. But it was the lure of the stage that finally drew him in. Starting his career at the Hippodrome Theatre in Bolton, Lancashire, he even secured a cameo in the Beatles movie A Hard Day's Night, portraying a magician named Leslie Jackson. Breaking Stereotypes Nimmo rapidly became known for playing aristocratic roles in both television and films. He had starring roles in The World of Worcester as Bingo Little and featured as Lord Southmere in the comedy film One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing. Even the James Bond spoof film Casino Royale included him in its ensemble. But it was his portrayal of the Reverend Mervyn Nutt in the sitcom All Gas and Gators that truly etched his name in British comedy history. The series was a trailblazer, pushing boundaries by making senior churchmen the comedic focus. Nimmo continued in a similar vein by portraying a clumsy monk in the BBC series O Brother and a Roman Catholic priest in its sequel O Father. By the end of these series, Nimmo had become synonymous with the role of a traditional British clergyman. Awards and Recognitions Derek Nimmo didn't just win audiences, he won accolades too. In 1969, the Royal Television Society honored him with a silver medal for his performances. His talents extended beyond acting. He was also a mainstay on the BBC radio show Just a Minute. Despite his success, he faced challenges as a chat show host evident during his stint on If It's Saturday, It Must Be Nimmo, which aired briefly in 1970. A man of many interests. He was an avid gardener, photographer, and wine expert. A collector at heart, he treasured walnut furniture, porcelain, and paintings. In addition to acting, Nimmo had a knack for after-dinner speaking and even penned several books on wine and theater. The Theatrical Globetrotter Nimmo's wanderlust led him to 30 countries with his touring production, Intercontinental Entertainment. From Australia to Thailand, this journey not only satisfied his travel bug, but also provided him with ample material for his radio stories. Personal Life and Awards Nimmo married Patricia Brown in 1955, and they had three children, Timothy, Piers, and Amanda. Besides his acting awards, Nimmo also received the Benedictine After Dinner Speaker of the Year Award in 1990 and an honorary master's degree from the University of Leicester in 1996. Nimmo's Final Days Derek Nimmo's life met an unfortunate end on February 24, 1999. After attending a celebrity lunch and subsequent dinner with his wife, he met with a tragic accident at his home. While checking an external alarm, he lost his footing and tumbled down a stone staircase, sustaining severe head injuries. While recovering in the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, he contracted pneumonia and never woke up from his coma. Legacy Lives On Derek Nimmo is laid to rest in the churchyard at Easton Maudit, Northamptonshire. But his legacy, embodied in a career that spanned multiple decades and mediums, remains immortal. From the conventional upbringing in Liverpool to becoming a beloved comedy icon, Derek Nimmo's journey was anything but ordinary, marked by stunning highs and tragic lows. Nimmo's Will A will, often seen as a final farewell, is like an eternal stamp on relationships and a family's dynamics. The case of Derek Nimmo is no different. His last testament reveals both the expected and the unexpected, making headlines for the right and wrong reasons. 
What makes this will particularly remarkable are not just the tangible items left behind, but also the relationships it highlights. Justin Nimmo, Derek's illegitimate son, was remembered in a meaningful way. He was gifted gold-crested cufflinks and a treasure trove of ancient artifacts, including Roman, Greek, and Egyptian pieces, along with an ivory chessboard. Although Justin is the result of a six-year affair with an actress only known as Anne, Derek did more than just remember him in a paper document. Justin was born in 1969, and he grew up knowing his father, visiting him often, and even sharing quality times in nice restaurants. Their relationship wasn't just a paragraph in a will, it was a lifetime of affection and contact. Derek also didn't forget his other children in his will, except for his eldest son, Tim, who was notably absent. The reasoning? A family argument that led to a falling out for about 18 months. While they did eventually reconcile, the will was never updated, leaving Tim to ponder what could have been, but stating, quote, It's not the biggest thing in the world, is it? Other beneficiaries include the Garrick Club in London, who received a Derby China figure of Falstaff, the Shakespearean character. Friends were also remembered. One was gifted two dozen bottles of claret from Nimmo's personal cellar, while another received decanters filled with the finest cognac and malt whiskey. Derek Nimmo, who passed away in 1999, was a complex person to say the least, known for his humor and also for being a private man. His will shows a man who loved deeply, carried secrets, and perhaps lived with a few regrets. Nimmo lives on through his work. Whether you remember chuckling to episodes of All Gas and Gators during its original airing or discovered Oh Brother during late-night reruns, there's no denying the sheer cultural magnetism Nimmo possessed. These TV shows not only set the benchmark for British comedy, but also defined an era of television that celebrated quirks, quick wit, and characters who were irresistibly flawed yet endearing. It was comedy that didn't rely on outrageousness, but instead utilized nuanced humor to reflect the social intricacies of the time. Nimmo's portrayals were so impactful, they became part of the cultural fabric, referenced in conversations, and even inspiring comedians for generations to come. Nimmo's characters have achieved a level of immortality in British pop culture lexicon. You might hear phrases from his shows tossed about in pubs, see references to Nimmo's characters in modern sitcoms, or even notice a hint of his comedic timing in today's British stand-up routines. These shows were not merely televised performances, they were comprehensive case studies and how to make people laugh while offering a satirical mirror to society. The legacy of these programs endures not only in their cultural impact, but also in their accessibility. If you're looking to relive the hilarity or introduce a new generation to Nimmo's genius, you're in luck. Both All Gas and Gators and Oh Brother are available for streaming on platforms like Amazon UK and BritBox. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Derek Nimmo? Let us know in the comments section below.